Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Steve Rasner. Welcome back to The Lionhearted. I always tell you things that I don't know whether podcasters are supposed to tell their audience. Like sometimes I make these podcasts a couple weeks ahead of time, of course. Not all the time, by the way. And sometimes I find myself like entering a weekend and I haven't made one. By the way, I think I've missed one in the last four plus years. I really have lost track of how many years I've done this. But I'm saying all this to you because I'm doing this one tonight after I worked all day. That's why I have this cheap, hole ridden shirt, <laughs> shirt on right now. And uh, I didn't put a lot of effort in how I look because it doesn't matter. Because part of the theme of my podcast is for me to keep it real. So if I came on here with a suit or scrubs or what, I don't even care. I am simply interested in helping you. And I got to be honest with you, a little more excited lately than I used to be in doing these because it feels like we're really growing. Not to be clear that I get paid by anybody for doing these. It's not like, I think if you reach a certain amount of uh, downloads, you can like advertise. And I wouldn't even, even care about that. But I'm just thrilled that many of you are listening. I can tell by your emails, the number of emails. I can tell by how many people have signed up for my courses. And if you don't mind, I want to say something about that. The courses this coming fall, and I'm giving this to you in late August, so my first course is five weeks away, are way more than sold out. There's a waiting list in case somebody falls off on both courses. I could almost have a second course. And I listen, man, I, <laughs> I feel good and proud that I have something that, because so many of the Doctors that come are word of mouth referrals from the boss of another office who sent some of his younger dentist or his son or his daughter, whatever. So I'm celebrating my the positivity of these podcasts. That's why I do them. I do them to have a voice. I do them to get an email from one of you that tells me you opened up your first practice or you just cut your sedation license, or you sent me an x-ray of some implants or grafting you did. So the reason me telling you this, if you have any inkling that you want to do this until I add other dates, and it's very hard for me to add the dates because it takes months to prepare for each date. Do you understand? So the course I'm giving on September 30th, October 1st, That'll be 30 surgeries. Think about it. I've been working on that since May, screening patients and getting the right ones that I think you'll benefit from the most. For me to stick a bunch of perio patients in there is a joke. I wouldn't do that to you. Or put some patient in that's too fragile and could harm your confidence if their blood pressure went awry or anything like that. So a lot goes into it. So at the risk of sounding like I'm selling out, I'm really just telling you the truth. If you have an interest, sign up for the spring of 2023. Again, maybe I'll add, I don't know, a third day for a different class, or I haven't figured it out yet. Anyway, here's where we're at tonight. I was going to talk about something completely different. And then I went back and looked at the numbers of what you guys download the most. And by far, what you have downloaded the most is when I had to podcast why your income isn't what you want it to be. By 30% more, that was downloaded. And I only did it like a month ago. And sometimes, listen, I don't go back 
and study each podcast to make sure I'm not repetitive. Sometimes you need to hear me again about a subject. I know, I know that's the way it is for me. Sometimes you need to hear somebody talk about a good idea more than once for you to take action. And that's what we're talking about. So I did that podcast literally a month ago. And the name of the podcast was Why Your Income Isn't What You Want It To Be. And you went wild. So I want to revisit it with my thoughts tonight. So the first question I have for you is, and I'm serious, you gotta, if you're listening to me, then you got to be honest about things. What have you done since in the four weeks? I'll remind you of the things I talked about in a minute. But have you done anything? If so many of you resonated with that podcast, it got to you. Why your income isn't... Can we just get to something for a minute? If you're tuning in for the first time, I don't know why. I always found it easy to earn a good living in dentistry and still maintain a very respectable clinical practice, meaning I certainly didn't have a machine with volume ever. More so, honestly, in my career earlier than it has been in the last 20 years, but never, never was that the way I established a very good income. And part of having a good income is not just money in the bank. Because I didn't have that for many years because I had very sloppy spending habits. I've told you this before. And I was not vigilant about a lot of things that I should have been vigilant. I definitely did not live by the advice I give you. That's why I'm giving you that advice about keep your credit cards low and your credit scores high. You know what I was good for? I made a lot of banks wealthy. I did. And I know I've said this before, but it's worth you hearing. I would figure out whether I could afford something by whether or not how how much it would affect my monthly budget. So think about it for a minute. So if I was shopping for a piece of equipment, I don't know, a dental chair, that may cost 10 grand. I would even dream of paying cash for it. It never entered my mind. I became a put it on a monthly bill guy for certainly half my 42 year career. And you can live that way. You can live, by the way, you can live that way. Obviously, some of you are with your cars, with your, even your college tuitions for your children. I did that. And you can do it to the extreme, and this is the problem, that you become a slave at work toward your bills. That's why you have to work. That's why you can never take significant time off unless you've established the type of practice where other people can produce in your absence. And I was never able to do that either. Obviously, they produce, but not the way I do. And it wasn't because I... I wasn't because... I worked on masses of people is because, thank God, as I advocate for you, I was always a student and acquired a far-ranging skill set that I could do very productive and lucrative procedures myself. I didn't have to send them out. That's the truth. Absolutely the truth. That is why I tell you that all the time. Had I had the discipline that I'm trying to impose on many of you to not have to have a new car. I had a new car every two years. I had multiple houses, one at the shore, one in my place where my major residence. And I swear to you, every single one I factored as whether I would do it or not, just based on when you... Or bringing in 50000 a week, 60000 a week, 240000 a month. 
it's pretty hard to get scared by adding even 3,000 to that a month, right? It's a terrible way to think. The number one takeaway tonight on that subject that I just discussed, borrowing money, is I would find myself, I'm serious, I asked you, have you done anything since? Well, one thing you could do is hire an accountant that is familiar with dental practices. And I promise you, they are in your country, they're in your community or nearby. You should Google and investigate. You know why? Because they can give you comparisons to similar size practices. I told some of you before, at the latter part of my career, I had a virtual accountant. And I can give you her name and number. And she gave me detailed reports. I never went by reports, by the way. You know why I was able to do well? Because my obsession with CE, like some of you, enabled me to practice and grow my practice so big because I really was good at doing things. But I had to work a lot and produce a lot and not take enough time off. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm looking you in the eye right now, those of you watching me. I missed way too much of my kids growing up. And man, you can never get that back. And it's heartbreaking. It's brutal. It is. And I think back now as a not such a young man and with regret. I didn't intend this podcast to go, to go in this direction, by the way. But I'm, I don't know. I'm looking, you know, you understand right now, I'm looking at this little camera in this little room I'm doing a podcast in. And I, yet I feel that I've gotten to know many of you. I guess it's by my somewhat candid personality. And I say things I don't have to say because, you know, maybe I want to move you. You know, maybe... My voice tonight will make you relook. I wish somebody had gotten to me. Maybe they tried. I don't remember. I was just so happy that every year my practice, for the first 10 years, it seemed to double. I'm not kidding. I remember like 200 my first year, 400 my second year, maybe six the third. By five or six years, it was at five, it was at a million. Before I knew it, it was two million. And up and up and up and up. And had I had the discipline, I don't even care, by the way, if I, I felt the discipline to live within my means, it would have been plenty to be home more than I was. And I know it's kind of a quagmire, isn't it? Here I am telling you to take as much CE as you can. I've even told you to borrow. I would borrow for CE. You can't wait. These young doctors taking my courses, my courses are not inexpensive. And I'm the tip of the iceberg for many of them. And they are the, they are on the right path. Not just because they take my course, because they're investing in CE. It's amazing the pattern of so many of these young, inspirational doctors that I come in contact with. And I want you to become one of them. Whether you take my courses or not, I don't care. I just want you to listen because these principles are golden, man. I mean, why would that, how could anybody ever tell you, curb down your expenses? So maybe right now you're in a high vehicle per month cost. Well, you can sell it if you own it. Your lease isn't going to last forever. I'm telling you, I drive a 2000, I don't know if it's a six or seven Lexus and like with dents in it. And I could give a, you know what? Now, I certainly can afford whatever I want. But I don't know. In my early years, I was a, the bottom line was I was a prisoner to my practice meaning I couldn't take off significant time, which is why you hear me beat this up. One thing, however, 
a big income besides the lifestyle does for you is it allows you to be benevolent and gratuitous and become community. And that is one thing I never did forget. And nothing, I have no regrets. I gave back to the community every year, and I mean big. Hell, I'm having a party this weekend, and I'm 42 years into this. Now, this isn't community. This is for my staff. I'm having a pool party for them. You know, I could have a pool party and go to the uh, local store and get hamburgers and hot dogs, and there's nothing wrong with that. This friggin' thing is catered with, I, if I read the menu off to you, you would, uh, your, your head would pop off. And DJ and uh, all kinds of cool games and no agenda whatsoever. I do love my staff. And part of the reason I have that staff so long, and I've told you before, my staff, if you average up all their years, would average about 20 years per staff member. Some of them have been with me five. Many have been over 25, 142 years. And I can assure you that it's because I am not Mr. Rogers. I am a firm, fair, tough boss. I assure you, nobody that ever worked for me wouldn't say that. They wouldn't say I'm a pussycat, and they wouldn't say I'm unfair. And I'm fun out of the office. They still call me Dr. Rester, by the way. But in the office, it's I'm the quarterback, I'm the coach, I'm the manager. I'm why today, I swear to God this happened. It's the end of the day, I'm exhausted. Today was a hard day. And I walked, I had walked into the operatory. I was doing my lab, I was doing an uncovery of four mandibular implants. The patient was sedated. Everything I tell you is exactly how it happens. So that's not surprising that's a part of my day, right? Sedated, uncovery of an implant case, I advocate for you, implant dentistry, sedation dentistry. And I noticed the floor did not look clean. And there wouldn't be one reason in the world that should be the case in my office because we are overstaffed. And I have made it a point, and I made it a point today, and I wasn't happy about it. See, you can't apologize for some things, right? You can't say I'm sorry for cheating on your girlfriend, your wife, or your husband. That's not an I'm sorry. That's a lot bigger than that. And you can't say I'm sorry because your operatory is dirty. What are you thinking? How? Why should I even have to even tell you that? So I'm giving an example. I mean, I didn't raise my voice like I just did, but I wasn't happy. But I did. I asked who, who cleaned this room, and I had a discussion with them. We've had the discussion before. Anyway, off the subject. So... If you don't like your income, if you want to maximize it, you can't pray for it. You got to do something. So the first thing you got to look at, have you ever had the thought that I'm going to do something every day, which will add up to every week, that will make me better and my life and my situation better than it was a week ago. That's a great way to think. If you get up every Sunday or Monday, what can I do this week? So I'm not kidding with you. Maybe it's you really take action on getting a sedation permit. You go, you find, you quit writing it on a piece of paper. You actually do it. You go to somebody, you have them call. If you live in Europe, you find out, I know in Canada, I think it's the College of, you guys know what it is. I'm sorry. I have a lot of followers in the Royal College. You find out specifically what you need for moderate sedation. And I don't know what it is in the European countries or 
my friends listen to me in India and they're everywhere. And it's really flattering. Mexico now, a lot. Russia. And you take action by figuring out what it is you need. There is somewhere written what you need. In the state of Missouri or Alaska or wherever. And then sign up for those courses. You will never, ever take any other course that will provide you a skill set that will impact your practice more than oral sedation. Even if you don't do the surgical procedures that I teach and encourage you to do, if you just do everything else, your practice will be impacted greatly. The only problem is you're going to attract patients that need teeth to be removed. So then if you don't know how to do that, it, I don't know, I, I've never been in that situation. I kind of believe it'd be a buzzkill if I had to refer the patient I just, retra just attracted because I sedate people out to an oral surgeon. Now, I sometimes do that. I do. When I refer out, which is basically molar endo, orthodontics, and some oral surgery I refer out, third molars. There's no return on investment on third molars for me. I say it all the time. There's a very big anatomical difference in the human jaw between 30 and 32, and between one and two, to be honest. And morbidity in the cases of bleeding, or certainly an altered nerve sensation, go up dramatically. For what? To take a wisdom tooth out? And I can't do endo in less than an hour, like my endodontist. You want to know the truth? Um, tonight, I guess I should call this the truth. Truths from Steve Razor's 42 years. I used to always have an endodontist come into my practice. It was part of my business model. And I thought I was doing well. And patients would come in and they trusted me. And maybe I just never lucked out and had I had good endodontist, but not great. And I knew my local guy was great. Not good. Great. And so then you see your crown and bridge years later that looks great. But how great does it look if the endo... We all know what great endo looks like, don't we? And look, you might be one of those guys, docs, that is amazing at endo. So then don't send it out. But I send mine out and my particular endodontist allows me, he sedates them too. So I kind of get away with it. And of course, oral surgeons can IV sedate. But I got to ask you, are you thinking that way? Because you should be, man. Because we are entering September. We are entering September in about a week. So you can tell I was running out of podcast because I just tuned you in to how close this was to September coming up. Another year with Steve Rasner, another year in your life. What have you done? What have you done? What about your marketing? Did you listen to me last time? I told you, you should be marketing to the oldies crowd. The people that listen to oldies, the people that listen to talk radio. Have, have you done any research? Have you taken anybody in your office and said, find out where the audience is on the radio stations? I mean, where are the radio stations that play oldies? And I mean oldies, like 60s, 70s, even 50s. Why? If I sat with you, I was going to do it, but I ran out of energy and told you the number of 80 some year olds that I've had huge cases on in the last six months. At first, I thought it was an accident, but I guess fit together seeking the best of life 80-year-olds must hang out together 
because I must have done a couple of them in the past year. And now I have tons of them, tons of 80 some year olds. I did four implants and you better believe I don't talk anybody into anything. I get right to the point if they're 80 some years old. You know, I'll tell you what I say. Well, I'm going to, I don't want to diverge because I'm going to use up all my time. I almost have. Here's what I want to take away to be tonight. I asked you a month ago, you all jumped on my podcast on your, why your income isn't where you want it to be. And the reason is very simple. You're not, you don't have a skill set yet. And part of the skill set is a sedation permit that makes you feel comfortable doing a wide range of skills. You certainly just can't do direct dentistry, restorative dentistry, and crown and bridge. I don't even mean dentures and have a fulfilling career, not in my opinion. So what else are you going to augment your skill set with? Starting with oral sedation. What have you done? Have you taken action yet? Okay. Maybe it's not where you want because you're not attracting the right group of patients. Let me tell you a story. So about eight years ago, and I've told you this before, I started a practice in the city of Philadelphia, which is about an hour from where I practice. It's where I live. I'd lived there about eight years or whatever. And I felt confident starting a practice there. And I did some really foolish things. I don't, you know, this is your podcast host telling you this. I opened up in a building that had 25 other dentists that had been there 20 years. I must have been out of my mind. I must have been either arrogant or whatever. And that, and I justified it by saying, the GP in that office who produced whatever the number was sent everything out. All the surgery out, all his implants, everything. I said, wow, bingo. I do all that stuff. I could double this practice. Well, guess what? To those Philly people, their heart and loyalty was to the periodontist that they had gone to for 30 years. Not the new kid, not me. And guess what else? I didn't research it enough. So a lot of the younger people that were became new patients for me were broke. It, w it wasn't a coincidence. And I don't know the demographics and the economics of every part of Philadelphia, but I knew whoever was downtown, which is where I was, and coming to me, couldn't afford the, the money in the, in the meter running their car. Because many times they were looking at their watch, scared about it. So the takeaway is who are you marketing to? I back then marketed in little local newspapers trying to reach those pockets of people that were within a mile from my practice. I'm going to give you a part two of this next week. And I want to talk about your skill sets further. Really, what is your case presentation skill? And we've got to quit like dilly-dallying around about that. Do you have an impeccable presentation from that moment? Not in, say, a tricky one where you talk people into stuff. I don't even want you to do that. Of course I don't. Are you likable? Can you become likable in seconds, in minutes? Do they see you as sincere and honest? Do you look them? And this isn't easy for all of you. That's why we got to talk about it. And what have you done about your insurance? Anyway, I hope this helped a little bit. A little bit of a rant by Steve Rasner. You've heard him before. See you next week. Keep listening. I love it. I want to break my record. I'm close to it of downloads. And write to me. DRResner at AOL.com. I know it's laughable. 
See you next week.